our first speaker will be um, Jessica, Jessica Venyo, with reading and writing. Dumelan, I am Jessica Venyo. The word reading, what does it mean? Anyone? Reading. Can you please help us, mommy? Reading, what does it mean to you? <laughs> okay. Anyone else? Reading. Yes, please. I think reading for me means, first of all, acquiring information. Okay. Through text. All right. So going on an adventure because reading takes you to places you've never been. Um, so yeah, that's what reading is for me. So acquiring information and knowledge through text and also just allowing your imagination to go wild. Okay, excellent. That's impressive. Anyone else? <coughs> reading. It doesn't have to be the actual definition. What does it mean to you? What does it mean to you? Yes, please help us. What does reading mean to you? Uh, to, to me, it means going through text. Going through text. Yes. Good. Taking All right. Notes. Going through. Taking notes. Taking notes and of what you read. Yes. Okay. And communicate. And communicate. So today we are going to take a look at reading, a general overview, reading comprehension strategies, and writing strategies. We are going to do a quick activity. I would like you to write your favorite quote from a book you are currently reading or a book you've already read. A current quote or a sentence, your favorite sentence or your favorite quote from a book you are reading. Yes, ma'am. It's just a sentence the book the book I have read. Yes, please. We dig potatoes with our bare hands. The book was We Shall See for the Fatherland by our uh, author Zitz Munda. Okay, that's an excellent one. What does that mean to you, the quote? What does it mean to you? What does the quote mean to you? Your sentence that you, what does it mean to you? This quote? Yes. To dip the hands in the potato, what does it mean to you? Yes. My heart. Pardon? Uh, it makes me to be to get emotions. Emotional. Okay. All right. Okay. Anyone else? Yes, yes please. The book was dead to success. Okay. If you are not happy with the system you are in, just to quit. I also like that. I like that. Okay. <laughs> Anyone else? Yes. I don't remember the book. Okay. But it talks about the law of attraction. Okay, okay. Positive thoughts brings positive results. Okay. And negative thoughts brings negative results. And that is very true. What you think affects you totally. All right. Let's look at the next thing. Before reading. <laughs> What do you do in the classroom? Do you just give the book to your students and tell them to go ahead to read or you do something before you read? So we are going to look at this. I normally use this. I call it TIFS. T stands for title. You establish the topic. H for headings. Identify important sections and specific topics. I introduction. Provide overview of the text. E, every first sentence of the paragraph establishes the main idea of the information in the text. Then we have V for visuals and vocabulary. E, end of chapter questions, which indicates important points and concepts from the chapter. Then we have S, summary, activate prior knowledge by writing down imaginative information about the title. When you pick up the book, the reading book, thank you, you need to ask the kids what do they think about the title. They should tell you what they think about the title. You look at the author's name, so you look at the back, the verb, you look at it and read so that the children will have an idea what the book is about. 
so you need to link that to your reading so when you finish when you're done with that you go on and look at the first vocabulary they can find over here when you are done with reading this you ask them about their idea about what they've read over here then after that you can now open the book and delve into it so the first reading strategy we have here is monitoring what do you do when you monitor the first one we have here is to use mental text what does it mean by using mental text normally you have to look for books that are already written written books and give to the kids how do you read aloud to your kids they have different technology that um, we have different audio books with the help of technology now so we have v books spotify librivox k12 reader and we have tambo books without that the children can sit down and listen to the what they have in the book and they listen to their tonation taking note of where there's punctuation so after that you monitor by reading to the kids you ask the kids to read but they want to hear you how you also read before you give them the chance to read then you move on to independent reading this is when you give the books to the kids and you allow them to read on their own you walk around monitor see how they are reading the book you can give them um, color pencils and ask them to take note of vocabulary they can underline the vocabulary put a question mark at where they do not understand then we have guided reading this is what you use for those who um, are at the low level low ability students with this you sit with them in groups if you have carpet in your classroom you put it down you sit in groups you read with them taking note of the phonics and how they pronounce the words then we have reading accountability so you pair up the students and you ask them to read for about 10 minutes then we have three two one strategy this is when you measure student engagement so after they are done reading the book you ask them to write three or two things that they like about the book and one question they may have about the book so we have visualization so most of us look, like looking at pictures on the media we take our phone every day to check what is going on watch videos so you can use videos where the children can listen and also watch what is going on so with this they delve into their imaginary and they also get to see the bigger picture so let's look at this we have making inferences so earlier on you asked them what the title was about so you now link that to what the book is actually about then we have summarizing after they are done reading the book you can give them um, sticky notes or some sheets to write what they've read about and when you are summarizing you have to take the key idea from each paragraph the key idea from each paragraph and also you can also use graffiti walls with graffiti walls you have a display board in your class so let's say this is our display board you put pictures about the text all around and let students walk around and also make assumptions about the pictures then we have affective approach when your students are reading how is the environment like anyone here when they are reading is it quiet all the time okay you can vary that by using the affective approach with this you play music um, classical music or instrumentals at the background while they are reading so that you can vary the environment okay so we have gamification this is when you match up the vocabulary with the meaning so with this we are going to do an activity right now what i want you to do is read the passage look for at least two vocabulary in there 
when you find the vocabulary you are going to use context cues that is the words around the vocabulary to write your own meaning of the word so no dictionaries allowed no phones allowed so over here we have some vocabulary in here there is one here late in life he married a second time a stockholm woman of questionable character much younger than he who guarded him into every sort of extravagance so with this we have a word here guarded what does it mean look at the words around the word guarded to write the meaning down anyone one word anyone You want me to explain one word? Yes, one vocabulary. Okay, I think this uh, word that maybe is misled. She was much younger than he and who got it here? She somehow, I think, she misled. So she, okay, so she misled him into extravagance. Oh. Okay, so anyone else, the same word, what does it mean to you? You gave me an explanation, can you please tell us? <laughs> Actually, okay. Yeah. I think uh, the meaning of the word is uh, who forced him into who forced him into extravagance. Okay. Anyone from the back? Any other word? Yes. Pardon? What? But brought him into extravagance. Okay. So all those words link up with the word guarded. Okay, so another word, then we move on. Another vocabulary. Infatuation. Okay. Okay. Okay, so someone has found the word. The word is infatuation. I'm sure you have your own explanations already. So what does infatuation mean? Infatuation. Please? Not serious love. Not serious love. <laughs> Okay. It's not real. Yes. Not real. Mm. Okay. Love. Yes, please. <laughs> what does it mean to you? I think impartation. It's what? Addicted. Addicted. Okay. Yes, please. Last. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> what else? So that relates with what? Not, not having love for the person. Just maybe you're just attracted to the person or you're lasting after the person. All right, let's move on. So another game you can use in the classroom is mystery word. Over here you have words from the passage and you shuffle it with other words that are not in the passage. And you let you put them down and you let the kids go and shuffle and find the word that is not in the passage. That means that you have to read the passage more than once to know the vocabularies that are in the passage. So you pick the vocabularies from the passage and you add one or two words that are not in the passage. So you put them down and you call your kids to take turns and you use a timer to time them. They have to find the word that is not in the passage. Because of time, we wouldn't do that one. So we have a passage about Oliver Twist by Charles Dickens. So you are going to read that passage and write your own summary beneath it. So remember I said when you are summarizing you have to take the key idea from each paragraph. So look for the key idea after reading. Look for the key idea in each paragraph and use that for your summary. Oliver, one of the boys who was tall in stature, threatens to eat one of the boys if there is no more, if, if there would be no some more food. And he had very scary, hungry eyes. 
The food wasn't enough as usual. Then Oliver took courage and asked some more. So the master was astonished and somehow angry with Oliver. Okay, so do we have everything from every key idea from each passage? The last passage, you have any key idea from the last paragraph? I thought so. I think so. So which part of it was the key idea from the last paragraph? What? Which was the key idea that you added from the last paragraph? Which sentence? Uh, uh, I think the master was, was very astonished. That the master was very astonished? Yes, that he asked for some more. Okay. Mm. Anyone else? Um, I said, uh, in the orphanage house, uh, children were ill-treated and fed small amount of food. Okay. And one boy planned that uh, he should intimidate his counterparts. Okay, so he has the first key idea about starvation. Okay, continue. He should, he should intimidate his uh, counterparts so that they could feel uh, the strength to ask for some more food. Okay, then he also has the indication where they ask for more food. Okay, please go on. And then the result was that uh, one boy had to suffer the repercussions because he confronted the master. You also talk about the master. So he has everything from each paragraph. Excellent. Well done. <laughs> okay. So this is for you. You can continue at your own time. We are going to move on now. So when you give a topic to your kids in the class, you just give them the topic and tell them to start writing. What do you do when you give them a topic to write about? Creative writing. When you give them a topic to write about, what do you do? So if you catch the boy answering my question. <laughs> What do you do? <laughs> I, I explain the topic. You explain the topic? Yes. So try to someone else to also answer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So it came right to you, so please you have to answer. Yes, what do you do when you give a writing topic to the kids? Did you just tell them to start writing or what do you do? Explain the topic and maybe give a sort of an example. Okay. All right. Keep the ball for me. <laughs> All right. So we're looking at teaching um, writing strategies, how to teach writing. So with this, you have to use mentor text. So you use mentor text, you have write apps that have been published. You show it to the kids, you can put them on your display board in the classroom. They take a walk and they look at all the features, the beginning, the middle, the ending, how the resolution was. They take a walk and look at it. Then you also have to demonstrate. You know kids love it when you do the same thing they are doing in the class. Sometimes you give them an activity, they ask you to do the same. So you have to do the write up for them and show them every step that they have to take. How many of you watch um, cooking shows? Uh, who likes to watch cook cooking shows? The ladies. Do you watch cooking shows? Do you like to watch, watch a chef cook? Yes, they, they give you the recipe, they tell you what you have to do. So as a teacher, you have to give your kids the recipe on how to write. You have to demonstrate to them. So you can also brainstorm topics. You use the mentor text, then you, they take a look at it and look at the features of writing. The features that have to be in the writing. For example, um, if you are writing about explanatory text, what should they start with? After planning, what should they start with? They have to start with what? An introductory statement. That is one feature. And you, you can also use picture prompts. So when you have your writing paper, so before you have your topic, you should have a picture there. You know, sometimes when you look at a picture, you can explain what the writing is about. You can look at the picture and use that to write. So you see, you can have a picture. Maybe you want them to write about a day they will never forget, or you want them to write about how to use, how to um, arrange the library for convenience. So you have a box here. You have shelves. You have boxes. You have books. 
you have tables, chairs, then they can use that to write about how to arrange the library for convenience. So let's look at the next slide. Planning. This is very essential because without a plan, you can't move on. So with the planning, you ask the, the kids to write the key ideas that they need in their writing. So with the planning, they have to write the name of their characters, describe their characters, the setting, the main idea they want to put in their story. So normally, you have it in a box form. So normally you have it in a box form. So you have characters, you have the setting, the plot, and what the theme of the story. And you let them write any detail they want to add to the story over there. All right. So also you can let them create vocabulary mind maps. How many of you know what a mind map is? Mind map. Okay. So I need to show you. Can I have a pen here? Yeah. There is a. I need. Okay. All right. Yeah. So there's one here. So we have a mind map. Whoopsie. We have a mind map with different things. All right. Okay. Okay. So over here we have a mind map. Over here they're talking about verbs. So they have words that link to verbs. And we have a noun, the meaning of noun in the end, things that are nouns. So you can let them do a mind map and write the vocabulary that they'll be using in the writing around the mind map. And when they are writing, you have to provide checklists. So with the checklist, at the end of um, their writing, you normally mark their work with a rubric. So you have to give them a checklist to use when they are writing. So that when you are marking, because the kids are not just magicians, you expect some things from them. There are some things that they can provide, but without the checklist, they won't provide everything that you need. So we have the checklist, we have an interesting title. My story has an interesting title. It has the setting and character description. It has what is happening in the beginning of the story. It has the problem. It has solving the problem. It has, I have shown the feelings of my characters. I have finished writing effectively to complete the story. I have written in paragraphs and each paragraph contains a new idea or event. I have used interesting language throughout my story to paint a clear picture of the reader. I have used time words to help the reader follow the story. I have used different types of sentences to make my writing entertaining. I have used speech carefully with correct punctuation. So you need to give this to your kids while they are writing. And also you have to use sentence starters. How do your kids normally begin their stories? What is the common way that they normally begin their stories? Who remembers? What is the common way they normally begin their story with? You ask them to write a story. Mostly we see once upon a time. Yes. And it's been on and on and on. You tell them to write another story once upon a time. But that is not the case. There are so many ways to start a story. We have one reason. It depends on the type of writing you are doing. So we have one reason just like first in addition one reason the worst my favorite it is important then we have the best just like in contrast we have during later earlier so we have all this that the kids can use instead of using once upon a time one day every day it becomes boring sometimes So first of all, they have to, after doing their plan, they have to write the first draft. So the first draft, you let them write freely. Not freely without letting, letting them check for mistakes. When they are done writing, then you can now revise using the checklist and you fill in loopholes, doing grammar correction, punctuation correction. So that you can give them color pencils and tell them to read over their writing. 
and fill in the missing parts that are not there. <coughs> so after they do that, you can let them sit in groups or you can just pair them and tell them to read each other's write-up. So while they are reading, they have to look for two positives and a wish. The two positives is two things that they think are interesting that their friend has written in their text. And a wish is something that they left out that they have to add up. So after that, you have feedback with them. You review the papers with them. Then you move on to the editing stage where they rewrite their whole paper. So are there any parts that are missing? You ask them, are, are there verbs? Are there adverbs? Are the punctuation used correctly? So at that point, they write, they rewrite the whole paper on a new sheet to give them a new sheet to write what they've written on the previous sheet. So that is the publishing stage where they write on a new paper. So remember, you have to use your rubric. Your rubric shouldn't be different from this one. Whatever you have on your checklist must be the same as your rubric because you are expecting them to provide this for you. So you use this as your marking scheme too. So we are going to do a short activity. So uh, we are going to give you the rubrics, um, the checklist, but we are going to leave one group out to see how they will rise without the checklist. So we are just writing the first paragraph, a day I'll never forget about. All right, so this is for the group without the rubrics, sorry, the checklist. And this is for the group with the checklist. So we are going to see the difference. So do they have an interesting title? That is the first thing on the rubrics. Do they have, on the checklist, do they have an interesting title? The title here is The Day I Will Never Forget. Over here to The Day I Shall Never Forget. So at least with that, they did well on that, all of them, <laughs> without the rubrics. Let's see the beginning. It was on the 12th of March 2021 when I stepped down the when I stepped down the bed and gazed through the window. Do they have a character in there? What? Character. Mm. The people they are talking about, the character. Mm. Or the, okay, or the setting, the place yeah. where it took place. Yeah. Uh -huh. So the bedroom. Yeah. Okay, very well. What about this one? Being abandoned in jeopardy, it never rains but pours. The day came as the day, the day was unusual, and we were all in a great misery when our family lost three members in a car accident. So, with this, do they have the characters? Yes, do they have the setting? Yeah, yeah. okay. So, please, can I have your rubrics? So over here, the only difference is with this one, with this one, the one without the rubrics, they didn't have the description for the character. The character, there's only one character, I step out the window, but we don't know who the I is. The I is. Yes, you have to be specific and you have to describe your setting. Is it a dark forest? Is it a cute mansion? Is it in the, in the backyard? You have to describe your setting, you have to describe the character. All right, thank you very much. And I'll be giving the checklist to everyone now. Uh -huh. Well done, student. <laughs> Okay, yeah. Thank you to Jessica. Okay. So we just wanted to show you the frustration that learners basically go through.